doing today, um, this is a GTO that we're working on, it's a 1967. Actually, it's a Pontiac Le Mans that we're converting over to a GTO uh, because this is the body that we purchased. Now, the original car that was supposed to be restored was a 67 GTO, but the body turned out to be too far gone and too rotted. So, we found us a semi-rust-free Pontiac Le Mans, which is a 67, and we're going to restore that body, but we got to convert it into the GTO. And to do that, we got to weld these holes up on the quarter panel on each side. Now, I want you to take a good look at this quarter panel before we go any further. And if you look right there, you can see how long the quarter panel is on this. Just to let everybody know how long it is, I'm going to get my tape measure out and I'm going to measure it from the door to the tail light and we're going to actually see what the total length is of this quarter panel. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. see how long this thing really is and it comes out to be let me get my arm out of the way there it comes out to be seven feet seven inches right there where I'm measuring so it could be longer or shorter in other areas on it but the area that we're working in is seven feet seven inches long from there to there and the reason I'm pointing this out is because when you're working on a piece of sheet metal this long it's very very important to make sure that you don't warp the panel. Now, I want you to pay close attention here when I, look how I'm pushing in on that. And uh, take for granted now, this is a 67, so the sheet metal is not paper thin like it is today. And I want you to see where I'm pushing it in. Do you hear that? That's called tin canning, all right? And the quarter panels on these cars are so long, all it takes is a small dent like you're looking at. There was a small dent here, there was a small one here. This one had a pretty good sized dent. I went ahead and pulled that out. But all it takes is a small dent on these long classic cars, these quarter panels or any piece of sheet metal like this. And then this is what starts happening. From having one dent over here, it might do that there. So I know there's a dent right in this area here, which I still got to pull out finesse it but what the real situation is and why we're here today is this deal right here so what I'm going to show you and I've already welded up six holes I still got one two three four five six to go is I'm going to show you a technique that's going to keep your metal from warping it's going to keep it from doing that right there all right and it's going to give you a better surface to do your body work on once you're done. Now, normally what I would do when I weld these little holes up, I would take a wet sponge and I would hit it with a sponge to quench the, uh, uh, the weld. And what that would do, that would stop it from shrinking all the way in and out. But since we got a big area inside the trunk right here, what I'm doing now is I'm doing a technique, it's called hammer weld. And what a hammer weld is, is where you take your dolly, all right, and it's got to be a, a flat surface just like that dolly right there, and then you take your body hammer, and you can either use a, 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 a flat surface body hammer or a shrinking hammer, which has the waffle face, and then what you're going to do is, while it's still hot, you're going to come on the inside, you're going to take your dolly, and you're going to come on the inside, and you're going to hit it, 
all right and you're going to dolly it very quickly once it cools down you're going to reverse your procedure you're going to stick your dolly inside and then you're going to have your hammer outside let me go ahead and do a couple of these holes i'm going to show you exactly what i'm talking about um, one more thing is when you're welding up holes like this you don't want to start here and just keep on going you want to start here then you move over to this hole then you move back to this hole and and then you finally meet yourself in the center Another thing about doing this type of welding is you can't be quick with it. It takes, it takes a, a, a time to do it because you got to let this one cool down while you're working on this one. And then the closer you get into the center, you're going to have to wait longer periods of time for it to cool down. And you're going to have to keep hammer and dolling it. Now I've already uh, uh, hammer welded these ones here. And if you look at the service, you can see that by hammer uh, welding them, I'm going to call them hammer welding, um, the surface is still uh, pretty squared up, it's pretty flat, and we're keeping everything in a cons consistent uh, contour that we want. Now one more thing before we start, we want to talk about our welder. Um, a lot of guys out there are just buying uh, 032 wire and setting their heat gauge on whatever they think is going to work but I'm going to let you know that the wire that I am using is 022 gauge which is very thin that's the thinnest you can buy that's all I use on sheet metal I pretty much use 022 gauge 023 022 same thing I use that on pretty much 95 percent of everything I do even when it comes to welding uh, angle iron and um, all the way up to eighth inch, maybe possibly quarter inch, uh, plate steel or angle iron, I still use 023. Uh, it's unnecessary when you're doing uh, body work or you're in the body work field to use 030, 032, 035 wire because all you're going to do is warp your steel because you got to use a hot range, the wire's thicker, and you got to move a lot slower. So to really work on an automobile properly the 023 wire 022 023 wire is the wire of choice on this particular situation now on my Miller welder my 251 welder which I've had for 20 years and it still works like brand new um, I have the heat range set on 17.6 volts and then I'm running out at 28.9 percent wire um, the welders that they supply today are now automatic setting uh, welders. You don't have to manually set them. You can just basically go into your little computer face on your welder, push your buttons. I got uh, uh, 16 gauge sheet metal. I'm using uh, 023 wire and it automatically sets itself. But it's very important to make sure that you're using a very low heat range when you are welding on sheet metal and doing this type of welding. So I got my hammer and dolly right here ready to go and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and weld this hole up and we're going to show you um, what hammer welding is all about. Now when I weld this up I want you to pay attention how the metal is going to suck itself in and then to fix that problem we will use our hammer and dolly to pull it back out. So on this particular situation, since we have that weld there, it looks like this pulled out instead of went in. So I'm going to use my dolly on the inside. And now by using our hammer and dolly, what we have done, because on this particular weld for some reason it pulled out instead of went in, um, what we've done, we flattened it back out and uh, have made that a weld that we can grind down and do body work to. 
Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move ourselves over to this side of the weld job and then we're going to go ahead and weld this one up. Now one more thing I want you to pay close attention to is as you weld them up in the center the less um, shrinkage you're going to get because by welding the holes up is basically stiffening up that section. So by the time we get into the center here we should have minimal shrinkage on our metal kind of like what you saw over here on this one. And that's basically what you call hammer welding. Now, another technique of hammer welding is, um, let's say I was going to replace this quarter panel section and I was going to bring it up into where these holes are. What I would do then, I would go ahead and stitch weld it, but as I was stitch welding it, I would take my hammer and my dolly and I would re uh, do the same thing, repeating my process back and forth by hammer and dollying that weld while it's still hot. Let's go ahead and do a couple other ones uh, so you can kind of get another idea and we'll keep the camera back there this time so you can kind of basically see what's going on. And then we'll load it on the inside. take a 36 grit flapper disc on our 4 inch grinder and we're going to lightly grind those down and it's important that you use a new grinding disc not an old one. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. We're going to take our dolly and our hammer one more time and we're just going to go back and forth. A minor grinding one more little minor grinding but as you can see we didn't lose any structural uh, contour of our panel by hammer welding the metal is still strong we got rid of that tin canning that was up here by heating it up down here and stretching that metal back in place um, I got to hammer this doll I got a hammer and dolly this there's a minor dent in this area over here so we'll get rid of that but that's basically what you call hammer welding is when you weld something up and why the weld is still hot you hammer and dolly it so it doesn't shrink or stretch on its own you kind of kill it in its foot tracks before it spreads you might say this is Pete my friend Pete your friend Pete I'm um, working on the 67 Pontiac GTO slash Le Mans conversion to a GTO car and trying to get her done. Take it easy.
for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.